Good day everyone and welcome to the channel. This is going to be my review of the very basic guide we get in Ash Wastes. For the Ash Waste Nomads themselves, the Orlock Quad. Then the second part of this video is going to be looking at some lore within the Ash Waste book itself. And then finally, I'm going to talk a very a little bit about vehicle rules of in Necromunda in Ash Wastes. So let's get started with the Ash Waste rules we get in the build guide in the box. We have first the quad for the Orlocks. The quad has a decent movement of 9, toughness of 4 in the front, 3 side, 3 rear, 2 hit points, a handling of 4, save of 5+, plus, ballistic skill of 4+, plus, leadership of 6, call of 6, willpower of 7, and int of seven. They are, as I said, 120 credits each and can be armed with a harpoon launcher and heavy bolter. You can take, as I understand it, you can take a heavy weapon on the quad and you can take uh, sidearms for the two people, so the driver and the gunner. My advice would be to either stick with the heavy bolter because that will make it a decent gun platform or go for the harpoon launcher. The harpoon launcher is an okay weapon. It is really good in the hands of other gangs, such as the Corpse Grinder Cult, but in the Orlocks, it's an okay weapon. Uh, I personally, between that or a heavy stopper, I would always go for a heavy stopper because it's got better range and it does more damage, but the harpoon launcher can come in handy in certain situations. It can pull people off ledges and stuff, and you can pull that kind of maneuver with it. So think if you do want to take it with the Orlocks. You will probably have to convert the Heavy Stubber if you want to put the Heavy Stubber on the quad because uh, I don't think the kit actually comes with a Heavy Stubber that you can use for it. Now the sidearms for the guys, of course in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, I would probably either give them auto pistols or stub guns. By the time you get up to close combat with a vehicle you should be running away. Vehicles, in my opinion, and that's again my opinion, are movable gun platforms in open combat. Now, Ash Waste takes the combat that we're used to in Necromunda and takes it into a more open playing field with some hab structures and other bits of terrain, but it's a lot more open than a lot of people will be expecting in Necromunda, which means your terrain is going to be very spartan and you're going to have to rely more on using tricks and traps. If you want to give them dum dum rounds, if you want to give them respirators and photo goggles or grenades or something, that's fine. But remember, each time you buy something, you are taking it out of that 400 credit allowance that is just for vehicles. So think what you want to do with your um, vehicles. And this is the how specific one. We don't know the costs of neutral vehicles. And we do know some of them. Jeans to the court vehicles, such as the quad that the wolf quad they have and the two others we need to see the rules for them in necromunda before we get into uh, the nitty-gritty of which is better so just be quite cautious which one you want to go for remember these are only get you by rules we will have better rules soon so i will be again looking at it differently when we get the better ones the ash waste nomad gang list they're expensive they do come with an ash cloak which counts as a respirator if they lose a wound as a result of uh, weather conditions on a 5 plus they do ignore that and they also come with a sky mantle which makes them hide in the waste at the cost of a double action this is really good in my opinion because it is open terrain and ash waste nomads are going to be able to use that terrain a lot better than other gangs so what you do when you do this double action is when you're 12 inches away from the nearest enemy model you basically count as hidden and you basically hide in the sand. So using that, if your Ash Waste Nomads is going to be really good. We need to see if that rule stays or if it changes slightly. Right, now we get to the actual Chieftain stats, the Nomad Watcher stats, the Warrior stats, and the Dust Rider stats. The Gang Hierarchy rules are for the Leader, the Chieftain, the Champion for the Watcher, and the other two are just Gangers. The Nomad Warrior is a ganger and the Rider is a prospect. The cheapest ganger or cheapest fighter is 70 credits. 
but it does include that mantle and the cloak, which gives you some buffs. The chief then has 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill. The rest is pretty standard uh, amongst leadership type things. Right, but there is some important notes. Do not give him the chain lance. Now, it's very tempting to give him a chain lance because of his weapon skill of 3 plus, but it's going to be unwieldy and it's more suited for your riders on your helmites. Give him a mono hook and a pistol, in my opinion that would work better, or a mono hook and um, a long rifle. That way you've got some range, that way you've got some uh, shooting, so yeah. Or you can give him the blast rifle of course, which is going to shock vehicles. Very fluffy, very fluffy in my opinion. They're basically last weapons but with the shock condition. We're going to look now at the charge caster with shock blast and crack rockets. It's a rocket launcher, which has the blast, shock, unwieldy, and unwieldy rules for both rounds. The charge caster is, again, just a missile launcher, but with the shock condition, which basically t makes vehicles take extra damage, as do their blast weapons, such as the pistol and the rifle. The helamites themselves grant you the mounted condition which also use that 400 point credit allowance for you know mounted or vehicle rules basically and um, that's what it's saying the nomad watcher is an okay fighter he's got good ballistic skill he's got the best ballistic skill in the gang so take your charge caster on him you'll probably only want one anyway because it's quite expensive it's um, 155 credits they're not a cheap gang not a cheap one at all the Nomad Warriors, as I said, are 70 credits with uh, decent movement, 6 inches. Weapon skill, ballistic skill of 4. The rest is pretty standard. Right, now, but there are a couple of other things that you'll probably want to think about taking. Again, this is to get your buy list. The Rocket Pack enables you to reload your rockets on your charge caster. Take it with one of your gangers, stick him next to your uh, charge caster, either a long rifle guy or a blast rifle guy, and pair them up and just do that, in my opinion. The skills that they give you are very basic skills. They're probably not what they're going to get in the book. So I won't really look at them because I think most of them are not not ones we haven't seen before. Stuff like Escape Artist and Evade and Fast Shot. They're all stuff we've seen before. Nothing new. There is um, something like Step Aside, which is decent. It, on your um, Probably on your Charge Cast to watch a guy. Or Unstoppable, which is again pretty decent on your own. Uh, charge caster guy you watcher overseer is probably your default leadership skill for your leader yeah in my opinion it hasn't really changed even with all the the changes on the rule itself it's still okay right so that's everything we've done really uh we'll note that their daggers get plus pluses to backstab yeah so but the only way you're really going to get that off is if you continue to hide a lot uh, your opponent forgets about one guy and you're able to sneak up on him and backstab him so, good luck with that. <laughs> so vehicles uh, have uh, very interesting characteristics, which are right, which remind me of Second Edition Warhammer uh, Forty Thousand. So we've got the movement front, side, rear, the hit points or H hit points or the uh, hull points, as they like to call them. The handling roll, which is very fluffy because you you're driving around, you're driving around in the desert, and you're going, can I make this turn, etc., etc. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, then you have your save, which is okay, and then you have your ballistic skill of your crew, which is... Your vehicles can go up or down depending on how knackered they become or how upgraded they become. We don't really have rules for the upgrades or the decoration in this book, but it is mentioned that they can go up and down. You need your... I will note that you re do need your handling to restart a vehicle, so try and keep that pretty decent. If you're going to run a campaign, again, I'm, we're going to need more rules on the vehicles which are going to probably come in the um, book of the book of ash then we have willpower intelligence uh, modifying characteristics and characteristics checks which are pretty normal the vehicle card is pretty standard it's um, very like your original card but just with a few bits and pieces then we have the traits of weapons which depends on which weapon you're going to take and which gang you are. So I won't cover that here. I will cover that in other I will cover that in other videos. So that's the vehicle rules. Uh, I will note that they do have firing arcs. So in a vehicle, you have a front and a rear firing arc. You don't have side firing arcs. This is future goblin. So 
but and this is an addendum to the Ash Wastes vehicle rules. Now, when I was talking about foreign arcs, which you'll probably be listening to uh, around now or just before, they do say that you need to agree with your opponent in order to agree where those arcs start and end. But it also mentions that the arcs also are where the weapons are pointing from. However, however, it does strictly say that the vehicle's vision arcs are an X formation. So this leads into a problem that GWs tend to have, or GW rules tend to have, especially when it comes to the specialist game section where they have these very rule light, very get your partner involved, get your player, other player involved, get your opponent and arbitrator involved to soft rule or hard rule these gaps in content. But the problem is going to be you're going to get that one person who is going to say, well, it doesn't. It says this in the rule book, so you have to play like this. And that's a problem. That's the major problem that I see with the vehicle rules at the moment. Until there is an FAQ or something which defines that more accurately, rather than, oh, just get you... Just get your people to agree, or wherever the weapon's pointing, uh, that's the rank, that's the vehicle arc, the, you know, the weapon arc. Again, there's a problem because it also states very clearly where the visual arcs are. But yeah, that's just me coming from the future, having reread the vehicle rules multiple times to check that point, to point that out. And um, now we go back to the rest of the video, but it was important that I include that, and it would be a miss of me to not include that. So you can fire behind you, and you can fire in front of you, and it's very narrow, it's like an X in the middle of the vehicle. So if you can imagine, I will put the diagram that they use on the screen, but if you can imagine that, that's a very tight view window. So if you want to fire on someone, you're going to have to pivot, I think. From what I can understand from these rules, you are going to have to pivot because the weapon does not have 3D 60 degree turn. It has simply front and rear, which is a bit of an annoyance to be honest. Right, okie dokie. Now we're going to talk about some law within this book. Now there isn't a lot of law, but there is some bits and pieces which might open to other things in the future. And while they're only little snippets of law, they're important to talk about because of what well, well, I'm going to talk about them. The first one I want to bring up is that Redemptionists tend to be more common for Cowdor related gangs in the Ash Waste. And they have sort of like Redeemer parties out here. Maybe we'll get a vehicle very like the Pulp Tech that the Redeemer has in the comic. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just have like a trash buggy or something. But it would be interesting if we got something like that rather than a trash buggy. Maybe they're using all their credits to build their vehicles to spread the religion of the redemption in the wastes would be interesting to see in my opinion then we have the Vansar titbit which they have an observatory and able to see a lot of what's going on we don't know what type of vehicle that will they will get but it is really noted that they've got this really posh observatory which is kind of like a bit like a like a big telescope that can view into the waste itself and into the stars we don't know much about the others, uh, obviously the Delac are being sneaky with their hidden masters thing and the Orlocks have their like road guarding crews and the uh, Goliaths have their pit fighting guy. It is rather small snippets of information about each, the only interesting ones are the ones I brought up really. But we do have one last thing I want to talk about, or two last things, is they mention muties specifically in the waste attacking Cinderac City and other settlements quite a lot. They also mention that the nomads themselves have big gatherings and sometimes they'll have mass, uh, like a massive army and they'll charge at one specific hive or one specific outpost and try and take it down. Nomads tend to be more around in Cinderac City simply because people believe that some of the nomads are descendants of a house that was once in the hive here and um, see Cinderac as their ancestral home and want to take it back. Then we have the scabby tombs in the map. While I did talk a little bit about this on Twitter, I will talk about it more now. The scabbies are my favourite gang and as you may know from these videos, I do bring them up quite often. If they turn scabbies into a gang that were in the sumps and the depths of the underhive into a more ash waste gang, okay 
but I would have preferred them to stay in these sump areas and maybe they are like some sort of like people who bury their dead in tombs and they have like a very rich tradition of seeing their leaders as kings or nobles and even though they're in rags even though they have mutants even though they have zombies they see themselves as descendants of royalty maybe and that's why they have these tombs they have these great barrow dens and uh, maybe that's why we're going to get them in ash waste we don't know much more about that to be honest we are going to get most of the information about gangs and stuff in this book of or books uh, the very slim rule book that we get here is a lot of reprinted information with some additions and uh, the vehicle rules and a few bits and pieces that have changed in F FAQ that you can find elsewhere while the rules themselves haven't changed it does expand your options in playing the game into the nomad campaign or the ash waste campaign it gives you some nice fluffy areas such as the roads such as the observatory such as the fighting pits in this book to conquer to conquer and run with your gangs which is interesting there's not enough information there's two uh, it's enough to whet your appetite but not enough to understand what's going on and that's irritating sometimes in my opinion will we see more in the books hopefully in my hopefully 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 we'll get much more information about the nomads and why they're so determined to reclaim their dead after battles and why they're so determined to sack Cinderac of course we only have rumors and bits and pieces from Vods at the moment so that's where I'm getting a lot of my information the book itself is okay there is a reprint of the skills there is also some cool scenarios such as cargo run the bone death race and settlement showdown wasteland encounter there's of course stuff like fuel hunt where you have to be very conservative on your vehicle usage or your vehicles are going to just be dead in the water and anyone who's anyone is going to target vehicles because they are gun platforms they're mobile gun platforms that's what they are that's what you should be using them as and um yeah yeah there we go the rules themselves as i've said haven't really changed much they've just added an extra component with the vehicles which is decent the in my opinion these are the best vehicle rules that i've seen since since the gorka morka so that's in my opinion that's high price so what do I know? I'm an idiot on the YouTube channel. But there we go. I will note that there is some nice colour artwork, especially of the nomads and stuff like that in the in the rule book. Uh, but a lot of it we've seen before in articles. Only nod we get to the squats are the UMC or the Mercantator Guilt, the Shellfist Miners, uh, and then of course we get the nod to the squat crawlers, but we don't know what they look like. Maybe they like spider vehicles. Maybe they're like the Jawa vehicles. We don't know. We don't know because we haven't got more information than that. And they might not actually even get a vehicle. Yeah, that's it really. That's it. That's all I can really say. It's just nods to fluff here and there. So that's all I can... I can't really say that it's a terrible book because it gives you everything you need. But I can't really say that it's a must-have book because most of the stuff in this book is just reprinted information with slight tweaks here and there that are released in FAQs except for the vehicle rules which I believe that they released as a free download somewhere so you don't even need this book really the best part of it is the map in my opinion <laughs> because I like maps so I've been Trix everyone and you've been all of you thank you very much for watching that's just been my little talk about the ash waste stuff that we've got so far if you can like and subscribe that really helps me out Thank you very much for your time and bye bye.